everybody, what's up? Welcome back to Twisted Life of TV. I am Poetry. You are here for P and TV. It's Poetry's News and Twisted Views. <clears throat> Let's give y'all a little bit about what I learned in the news this week. Um, I don't think I really got any celebrity gossip to like really focus in on. Um, and I don't have any TV news or movie news either. Not specifically. Um, it's mainly politics. Um, I've really have not been on the internet as much as I usually am. You may see me every once in a while come in and comment on a few things, but overall, I haven't really been on the internet, so my, my subjects is limited. Um, yesterday, there was a congressional hearing held in order to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of court for not showing up for his subpoena um, in which the, they wanted to have him testify in a private hearing. Hunter Biden has not showed up for any of his private hearings because he feels that any testimony that he gives should be a public hearing. The public should know what's going on. And the reason why he and many others with common sense think that they should be public is because we know that the GOPers be lying. They be making up stuff. They be saying stuff happened or said that didn't happen while they was in that hearing and they will sway the public's uh, viewpoint about what's going on. We already see that they are fabricating documents. They've already proved that they fabricated documents in regards to Hunter Biden. We, they've already proved that I mean to the point where they like uh, they, they, they they've already shown they are willing to body shame him and show um, naked pics of him stuff that has nothing to do with his actual case um, and we already know that they're trying to fabricate information evidence to make Joe Biden seem like he is this big ass criminal um, which they still don't have any evidence of we already know that they would do these type of things. Um, so he wants his shit to be done publicly. So during the congressional hearing yesterday where they were deciding whether or not to hold Hunter Biden in contempt, he shows up. He say, here I am. You looking for me? I'm right here. Okay. Um, through the entire session, um, a lot of the GOPers, um, they just they just hurled insults at him. Um, they hurled their disdain. Uh, but what they would not do is allow him to actually testify. Y'all been saying y'all wanted this man to testify. Now he here and you won't let him testify. They talked all around every um, thing that they could possibly do to actually allow him to testify like chastise him, berate him you know, everything that they could possibly think to say without actually allowing him to speak or answer any direct questions in regards to these so-called allegations, okay um, at the point where MTG y'all know I don't like to say it, it's Bay's name at the point where she decided to start to speak to him, she's the same one who um, came in and showed his nude pics, the sex videos or whatever to on the congressional floor with nothing, again, nothing that has to do with his actual charges um when she began to speak he said I had enough of this, actually he didn't even say nothing, him and his lawyers just got the fuck up and walked out and of course I noticed that a lot of the who was that, MTG Bober, and I forgot the other chick name they all in there. Well, women can't speak in here. Y'all don't like to hear women speak. They're trying to make this a a, a, a gender thing. Uh, no, bitch, we just don't like to hear you speak. We don't like to hear your lies and your bullying, your harassment, your nonsensical verbiage. That's what we don't like to hear. And Hunter Biden said he ain't got time for that shit. Okay? I showed up like y'all wanted me to. So you really can't help me in contempt because I'm here. I'm here. I came. Y'all chose not to uh, test, have me testify. Um, so, of course, you know, she went on this little rant 
um, and a lot of the other women in the GOP years went on their little rants about, you know, their, their gender wars and how the men just don't want to hear them speak. Da 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 da. Um, and uh, of course, got shut down by AOC and got shut down by people like Jasmine Crockett. Uh, but it's basically saying what I just said, y'all a bunch of fucking liars. He here, y'all should have asked what y'all wanted to ask him. Now he ain't here. Now y'all got a problem. Oh, he don't want to testify. Now he trying to run. He ain't running. He was sat there. He allowed y'all to sit there and berate a little him as long as he could. And then once, once the, the, the head bitch in charge decided to uh, speak, he's like, I ain't got time for this. You don't deserve his presence, MTG, at all. Okay? Enough was enough. Um, over in Trump's immunity hearing, from my point of view, was a shit show. Um, I will say that I did not watch any portion of what Donald Trump said. Everything that I listened to was actually from the lawyers. I wanted to hear the legal side of it. Um, in addition to, I just didn't have time to listen to the rest of it. Because I was I, well, I don't know what I was doing. I was on my way to the dentist. I was on my way to the dentist when I was listening to stuff. So, yeah, I got the tooth in. It ain't right. We're going to get it fixed. We're going to get it fixed. Anywho, it was basically a shit show to me. Um, listening to Trump's lawyer was a chore and for two reasons. One, the way he sound, and then what he was saying. As far as what he sound like, does the man have throat cancer? Is that why he sound like he going on the bag of glass? Or it's, oh, it's just like a long time smoking situation going on? He sounded horrible, like he was in pain trying to speak and deliver his words. Which, in my opinion, he didn't even believe what he was saying himself. He didn't believe it. It wasn't to the point that the judges got him so flustered that he just started spewing shit with with anger and aggravation. Um, and he did so to the point that um, he either accidentally omitted or accidentally shot himself in the foot by making a statement that he did not intend to say being that Trump is 100% immune from prosecution at all. And he said this not directly in those exact terms, even though he used that a few times, but he said that um, they gave some examples of what if Trump decided to shoot, go on the street and shoot one of his political uh, opponents or advise um, or advise uh, the SEAL team to shoot his political opponents would that be considered a crime and the way that the, um, his lawyer was describing it is if Congress decided to impeach him for those crimes and actually convict him not or but and convict him of said crimes that is the only exception that will allow Trump to be uh, prosecuted by a criminal court so using that as the using of uh, using that premise if Trump walked out the crib while he's in office decided to shoot anybody a political opponent a regular opponent anybody and Congress decided that they were going to impeach him. He then in turn orders the SEAL team to go in there and gun down everybody in the Congress room that was going to impeach him. Therefore, impeding any type of conviction because now everybody dead. That would not be considered a crime because he wasn't actually convicted. That's the type of rhetoric that he was spewing. 
they gave an example very similar to that. So I like I'm saying I'm using my own words, but they gave an example very similar to that, which is why you see so many news people saying that Trump's lawyer basically said that Trump to kill his political opponent and not be considered a crime. One of the things that his lawyer kept on trying to stress is that anything that Trump did while he was in office, he was wiping his ass, was considered an official duty. And as far as official duties are concerned, he's covered by this, this impeachment clause that, that I, of course, I know it's made up. At least the interpretation or the, uh, the exception that he was trying to put out there on the table was made up exception. The exception doesn't it exist. He was trying to say the exception is understood. It, no, that ain't how it works, sir. I mean, they both, both lawyers, in my opinion, were very ill-prepared on the offense and the defensive side. They were very ill-prepared in their delivery. It was too much fucking stuttering, too much talking around the question, too much acting like they didn't understand what the question was. It was too much of that. It sounded like somebody trying the case for the first time. That's what it sounded like. Somebody very amateurish delivering at this particular time. It didn't make sense. They had a whole lot of cases to cite. So they were full of knowledge with cases to cite. They may have had, you know, a cheat sheet um, on the table with just a list of cases to throw out there. But as far as like breaking down what actually happened in the case um, they weren't not hitting the key factors on point the judges was on their shit the judges were on their shit and speaking of the judges you know, people are making it a big deal that the three judges because he didn't have a, a 12 jury judge a 12 judge uh, panel he had a three judge panel and each judge was a woman two which was a black woman two which were uh, women of color or minorities what have you um so you know I, I told y'all before when um Letitia Green and, and uh, Alvin Bragg and Fonnie Willis was uh prosecuting these cases against Trump I was saying how proud it was of me as a black person that black people taking him down that's kind of how I felt when I listened to these judges. Because I was listening to it first. I wasn't even looking at it. And I had to look at my doggone phone like, are these people black? So he got some more black judges and chucking and some more minority judges deciding his fate. I would be sadly disappointed if based off of those testimonies that they gave in that, or those deliberations they gave in that courthouse yesterday, if they said this man has immunity from anything, you know, the, the judge, I, one of the judges, uh, Judge Henderson, the, the only white judge on the panel, um, she kept on, like, it seemed like she was trying to help him out. Like, that ain't what you meant to say, right? Please tell me that's not what you're saying. Is that not what I heard? And they, she gave, they, all the judges gave them opportunity on both sides to address the same scenario, the same topic, the same um, case study or the same case file to say what you think about this particular case and how it applies and what you think that we as a court should do in regards to this. So, so and um, when the, he made statements like, um, there's no exception to the rule. And then came back and said, but there is an exception to the rule. She tried to make it clear. Do you realize that what you just said? You originally said there was no exception to the rule, that he is completely 100% immune, but now you're coming back and saying that there is an exception. And all he kept trying to do is indicate what the exception is instead of saying, yes, there is an exception. That's all she want to know. If there is an exception, which I think he clearly understood, if there is an exception, no matter what the reason, there is an exception. Just the fact that exception exists means that he is not 100% immune as your brief tries to outline. So yeah, um, that case, like I said, was, they, they do uh, closing arguments today 
if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know how long it's going to take for them to come back and make a decision. But one, they still haven't even decided that this is their jurisdiction. If they have jurisdiction over this case. Um, but we'll see. They, like I said, closing arguments happen today and then they move forward from there. I feel like I don't know where I'm at on this road, which is crazy. I am behind. Why am I so behind? We're going to work today. Okay. Um, we had the GOP debate last night. I believe it was last night. It might have been two days ago. Shoot. The GOP debate happened over the past couple of days in Iowa. It was Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis only. Um, they only took the top two. So thank gosh we didn't get to hear Vivek Ramaswamy ass speak at all. It's so, it's so annoying just to listen to that motherfucker speak at all. Um, I didn't listen to the debate this time. And I heard it was the same of, some of the same old shit. Both candidates said that they would pardon Trump. Neither candidate, um, based off of the highlights that I watched, neither candidate want to hold Donald Trump to task for anything. They don't even want to speak on him other than to say that they are going to pardon him if they become elected, which makes absolutely no fucking sense. This man is a literally a threat to our democracy. That's just, this is, that is what it is. <laughs> and you're going to pardon him. Give him a slap on the wrist say, I forgive you. <laughs> I just don't, I don't understand. I don't understand their way of thinking. Okay, so Chris Christie um, announced last night that he is officially dropping out the race. Now, just a couple weeks ago, he said that he was going to stay in for the long haul. He was going to wait out to see how these Trump trials went, that he felt that he had um, movement, or he, that he could make up some movement over the year and put himself in a position to be elected. Um, yesterday, he stated that he realized no matter what he do, no matter how much truth he spoke, that he, the people don't care. And I've been saying that for a long time. A lot of other YouTubers who are reviewing politics have been saying a long time. These people know exactly what Trump, Trump is doing. They don't care because they think it's cute. They think it's funny. They are filling themselves up with pride as if, you know, uh, this is something that they want to see happen anyway. They feed off the racism because they are racist. They feed off the misogyny and they're homophobic. And they feed off that shit because that's the type of person that they are. And he is giving them exactly what they want because that's what they want for this country. They want this country to be taken over in a dictatorship. They want that to happen. So that he realized that that's where his party has gone. The majority um, is at this point. Like I said, there's a lot of people who don't participate in polls. It's, but he doesn't feel like people want to hear the truth. However, he says that uh, he is not endorsing any one of the current candidates. Because, again, they choose to pardon him in the event of... Uh, their, if, if they get elected. Um, so he's not going to support any of the candidates at this time and he's going to make it his business throughout the rest of this political year this political season to make sure Donald Trump never sees the White House again even if he was on a damn school tour that went to the White House he ain't going to be able to get in he, Governor Christie is going to make it his business to make sure Trump is not in office he was even asked um, on an interview not long ago if Trump is the primary will he vote for him and he said no he will not he hasn't specifically said that he will vote for Biden but he said clearly he ain't vote for Trump um, in the state of Nevada uh, there has been news out there that like Donald Trump was not on the ballot already Donald Trump has not been removed or banned from the ballot at all in Nevada. 
um, DeSantis, Chris Christie at the time, Warmer Swarmy, none of them are on the November ballot because November uh, the Republicans in Nevada have decided uh, they actually hold a caucus as well. The caucus um, is where not the people of the state of Nevada actually vote. The politicians assign delegates to the the political candidates. And they usually do so based off of percentages of the polls. I'm not sure what polls they use, but that's how they assign them delegates based on certain districts or what have you. Um, and the the final decision of that is, should be done on February 8th. The caucus began tomorrow because they said the caucus begins in two days. What's today, Thursday? Yeah, caucus begins on Friday. And so between Friday and February 8th, you know, I guess that's when they have all the polling or whatever they do to determine how the politicians decide how they're going to sign these delegates. They do all that for this month. And all of those candidates, with the exception of Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, and all the people who got already out of the uh, race, they all decided to join the caucus instead. Therefore, making Nikki Haley and all the other candidates who have already quit the race the only ones on the primary ballot. The caucus essentially makes the Republican primary ballot irrelevant. Um, so to me, that means that Nikki Haley won't win any delegates. I mean, they still hold the primary election. She's the only one on there that's still running. So she will win the primary in that sense. But when it comes to the caucus, the politicians of the state of Nevada are the ones who pick the delegates or the, who assigns the delegates. And the overall winner would then be announced by delegacy on February 8th. Speaking of Nevada, um, everybody seen that viral video of that young man flying across that dog on podium and attacking that judge. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all ain't going to like what I got to say. When I saw the video, I didn't have no sound on, nothing. That's all I saw. Oh, I didn't have sound on. I, all I heard was her say, that's very nice, but I'm going to have to give you a taste of something else. And then she smirked. And when I saw him fly over that damn thing, my first thought was, get her! I'm telling you, that was my first thought. That's without knowing what was going on. You know, this might have been my immature, ignorant response. But that was my first spot. thought. It was something about the way she smirked and said, I'm about to give you a taste. As if she was making an example out of him. That made me <laughs> enjoy his flying leap. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, anyway, the young man's name is DeAndre Diabre Redden. I think it's DeAndre Redden. He um, was in court in front of her for assault and battery, and she was about to sentence him. Okay. Um, they took him back to court to complete his sentence because he attacked her. He, I mean, he, I don't even know how he was able to fly over that damn thing. Podium, first of all, he hopped that motherfucker like he was a goddamn high jump or a pole vault. He, he, I don't know how he did it. He went over there, attacked her, beat the shit out of her, he had her by her. I believe the man bit her as well. Um, and there was, I, I want to say three court, um, officials that was trying to assist in getting him off of her. Um, they went so and they throw him punches and jabs and they, he was going in. He was, he went ham. And it was like, it was like something clicked in his head because it, initially he was trying to tell her, her how he didn't commit no crimes and how he trying to do better with his life and this, that, and the other. And then soon as she said, I'm gonna give you a taste, a different taste, he clicked. He said, oh, this bitch didn't know something like that. He, he, he clicked and jumped over. Okay, so he got 19 months, which was actually the lowest sentencing he could have got for those charges. I heard it was his third, uh, this was his third charge. I'm not sure if Nevada has a three-strike rule like a lot of states do. 
Um, but he was looking at 19 months to four, four years, and he only got the 19 months. Um, but now he does have to go back in front of another judge uh, facing 13 charges from the incident that happened in the courtroom that day. Um, when he brought him in, they had him tied up, had a mesh covering over his face, like a mesh cage over his face. That's what made me believe that he did bite her. Because otherwise, why would you cover his face up? Because he was still talking shit. He came through that door talking shit. <laughs> he wasn't quiet. He like, fuck it, I'm going down anyway. That's how he was feeling. So, he, got to, he has to go back in front of um, the judge, a new judge, to face uh, charges. I know this can't happen, but my feeling was like, if I was her, I would have had, well, he would have got the maximum for me. But I guess, you know, in all fairness, whatever she was going to uh, sentence him with, she's sticking with that same charge. She's not going to increase it based on his actions. Um, because that would seem, I guess, retaliatory. Um, so, yeah. That shit was wild. That shit was wild. Um, but yeah, I don't think he going to get out of jail anytime soon. He's 30 years old. A 30 year old man. What is his name? I think. Did I write his name down? Diabre. Diabre Redden. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Oh, and Judge Judy, I can't stand her ass at all. I didn't even like it when she, her show was on. She came out and made a statement in regards to um, what happened in the courtroom. And she said, along the fact, she doesn't understand why he wasn't shot and killed or gunned down in that courtroom. Um, again, well... I think that the officers that uh, intervene or the people who intervene did exactly what they were supposed to do. They probably could have used a taser. That I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have disapproved of a taser. But um, an, un an unarmed man that is supposed to be under the supervision of the police at this particular time while he's in court gunning him down ain't the answer Judge Judy but you know the, she in MAGA too anywho y'all I'm almost at work so let me get on to the happy news which I don't know I think it's kind of still sad in itself Angela Bassett uh, finally got an Academy Award and the reason why I say I think it's still kind of sad because it wasn't for any specific role that she did you know, Angela Bassett has been active for over 40 years. And in her 40-year career, she has only received two award nominations. Never an award. But on this particular night, they decided to give her an honorary Academy Award. Um, the honorary Academy Award is kind of like getting an honorary PhD. Where the organization says we recognize the work that you have done with the honorary phd they actually don't go to school to get that degree but the works that they have done within the community or within the educational field um allows them the right to um or is it just as equivalent a work a body of work as someone who has a p who, who actually went and got the degree um like we know uh Bill Cosby got an honorary PhD Little Chris got an honorary PhD um but you know people like that That's, and so for the academy we've been saying for years that she has been snubbed on all of her doggone um movies it was only one I didn't think she should have been snubbed for, and that was uh, the Wakanda movie, and that's the one she received one of her nominations for. I just think, I just didn't think that she did anything spectacular in that movie for me. In the second movie, in the first one, I loved her in it. Um. So, but now there's, you know, after all this time, she's finally going to be recognized 
and receive an honorary award. It was given by Regina King. And it was a beautiful moment. Um, so happy to see it. But that's all I got for y'all. This has been PNTV. Thank y'all for watching. And uh, see you in the next video. Peace.